In February 2015, the UK became the first country in the world to legalize a new, controversial medical procedure that as of March 2016 has still yet to be implemented in any other country. The procedure in question was the transfer of mitochondrial DNA between patients in an effort to prevent mitochondrial disease. But what exactly is mitochondrial DNA donation? Why is it needed? And why was the vote on it so controversial? First of all, let's start with the facts. As you may know, mitochondria are small organelles found in most eukaryotic cells which generate most of the cell supply of energy in the form of ATP. This is the reason they are sometimes known as the powerhouse of the cell. Interestingly, separate from the nucleus's genome, mitochondria have their own small strand of DNA known as mtDNA. However, unlike its nuclear neighbor, mtDNA does not determine many of the functions that we normally associate with DNA, such as physical appearance. Instead, mtDNA mainly encodes enzymes for its own requirements. Like in most animals, humans inherit their mtDNA from their mother. However, just like in nuclear DNA, mutations can arise which can lead to problems with the mitochondria's functioning. If inherited, this can lead to harmful symptoms for the offspring, referred to as mitochondrial disease. While many of these symptoms can be mild, around 1 in 6,500 children are thought to develop more serious mitochondrial disorders, including dementia, renal tubular acidosis, absent reflexes and neuropathic pain, cardiac conduction defects, blindness, deafness, and liver failure. However, while there is no cure to mitochondrial disease, scientists at Newcastle University have developed a treatment known as mitochondrial donation, which prevents these mutations from being passed on to the child. One of the techniques of the procedure, known as pronuclear transfer, involves fertilizing the mother's egg first and then transferring the nuclear DNA to a fertilized egg from a donor containing healthy mitochondria, where the original nuclear DNA has been removed. The healthy fertilized egg is then implanted into the mother. The nature of the procedure has led some to dub the offspring via such techniques as three-parent babies. This controversial term leads us into the debate surrounding mitochondrial DNA donation. As while the procedure is legal in the UK, there are still many who dispute its practice as dangerous or unjustified, both in the UK and around the world. So to understand more, let's look at the arguments and discuss. Is mitochondrial donation ethical? First of all, it's important to understand that, like any ethical debate, the arguments for and against aren't black and white, and on both sides of the debate, range in opinion from cautious to resolute. It's important, as scientists, to listen to and weigh at both sides of any bioethical debate to fully understand the ramifications scientific advancements can create. To begin with, let's look at some of the arguments against mitochondrial DNA donation. On the less extreme side, some have speculated that the legalization of the procedure will increase pressure on women to become egg donors. With little peer-reviewed research into the long-term effects of egg donation on women, some argued that this increased pressure could put more women's health at risk. As well as this, there are many who are just simply very cautious and concerned that DNA transfer is a step too far and will have too many unknown consequences to be justified. A more extreme reason why some oppose mtDNA transfer is the belief that the use of the procedure implies that people born with MT disease have less value in society than people who don't and need to be cured. They argue that this attitude of fixing people born with medical issues could lead to discrimination of disabled people in society. Additionally, there is also concern about the medical repercussions of such an unknown procedure. For example, as Picard and McEwen pointed out in their 2014 review, little is known about the role of mitochondria in regulating synaptic transmission, and less yet about their implications for cognitive functions and memory decline in the aging brain. Of course, this is only one side of the picture. To get the full discussion, we have to take a look at arguments in favor of mitochondrial DNA donation as well. Firstly, the majority of people for mtDNA transfer would agree that, in the eyes of medicine, all people are born and remain equal, and that instead of fixing a person to increase their value in society, medicine's purpose is to remove suffering and improve the quality of life for patients, an important principle considering the suffering possible due to mitochondrial disease. This positive attitude to combating the disease was echoed by the Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority in their review for the government which stated that there is general support for permitting mitochondria replacement in the UK as long as it is safe enough to offer in a treatment setting and is done so within a regulatory framework. However, more extreme arguments in favour of the procedure can be less about reducing suffering of the child 
are more about meeting the will of the parents. Certain individuals argue that if a parent has a desirable quality they want in their child, and the technology exists to grant that desire, then it should be made, regardless of the practicality or safety of that quality. In other words, creating designer babies. This is where the debate on mtDNA transfer leads into the debate on genetic engineering. As many have pointed out, the only major difference in mtDNA from nuclear DNA is the location. And so, if mtDNA can be modified to prevent disease, why not the rest of the genome? Once again, this argument has its own sides, with complex discussion on what change in the human genome would mean and its infinite unknown ramifications. But what can we learn from these arguments? With technology's importance in medicine increasing every day, scientists have found themselves tasked with answering more and more complex ethical questions arising around the world, including what it means to be human, whether personal desires should have a role in medicine, and whether there are lines that scientific advancements shouldn't cross. If we can learn anything from these debates, it is that scientists must continue to be aware of their researchers' impacts on the wider world, and thus remain top providers of information and judgment to better inform and advise on future debates. As the answers to these questions may significantly shape our future, the need for such understanding has never been more vital.